What's going on guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video exclusively on YouTube. This time we're not actually streaming this and uh, that's not so common. Today I want to talk about a pretty sizable announcement that Wizards of the Coast made. It was an announcement for a new set that comes out June 14th, I believe, and it is called Modern Horizons. Uh, I'm not sure many of you guys may have seen this, many of you guys have not. But I just want to put it out there and say that this is something that I've basically been suggesting for years. We talked about it on Magic TV. This was a suggestion I made back when I was with Channel Fireball. We talked about this on Freshly Brewed, me and Ali and Trazi. What Modern Horizons is, it is a 254 card set. I'll just put the details right up here for you. It is a 254 card set and uh, it skips standard. What that means is that the barrier of entry for Modern previously was you have to go through standard in order to get into modern. So if you have a set, let me just fix that color. If you have a set, uh, if you have a, if you have cards that you want to you want to put into modern somehow, let's say you wanted like a Stony Silence type card to be in modern, right? You'd have to go through standard. So the barometer uh, for whether a card makes it into modern or not is if it's strong enough to be printed in standard, right? So if a card is too powerful, like Force of Will. Uh, Flusterstorm, Baleful Strix, cards like these, if they're too powerful for standard, if they can't go through that that great that the great barrier as you may as you may call it, um, then you're not it's just not going to be in modern, right? Because the only way for a card to be in modern is if it was printed in a standard set, and that's it, right? And so this is unprecedented. This is the first time in modern's history where cards are being printed exclusively for modern where cards do not have to go through standard. So you can have, let's say Modern needs a card like uh, Days, right? I don't think it does, but let's say if it needs a Days, right? You can actually print it exclusively for Modern in this set and say, hey, it's in Modern Horizons, so now it's Modern Legal. <sighs> One other interesting thing about this set, <laughs> and it's kind of blowing my mind, it's a 254 card set, and I'm told uh, by the you know the the magic video that was up today, uh, Blake Schwar Blake Rasmussen said I almost said Blake Schwartzenbach, the lead singer of Jawbreaker and Jets to Brazil and uh, the Forgetters. Um, Blake R Blake Rasmussen of Wizards of the Coast actually said that the the set contains brand new cards for Modern and cards that were not previously printed in Modern. So what that means is this is this set if if what he said is correct if his quote is correct. This set is adding 254 brand new modern cards. Not brand new cards, but brand new modern cards, right? So like a thing like a Cabal Ritual, which has never been legal in modern, would now be in the set, right? And, and that's it's not going to be. I don't know if it's going to be. But it's interesting, right? It's an interesting prospect. And the fact that there's not a single reprint in the set that was already modern legal is kind of mind-blowing. Because this means there are 254 cards entering modern from this set alone. This isn't like a standard set where it's like, you know, even the, even a standard set has like 50 reprints and only five of these cards are really going to make an impact in Modern. This is a set that has 254 cards and all of them have never been seen in Modern before. And that's pretty crazy. Their Magic Online retail price is $6.99 a pack and it's going to be available in stores and on Magic Online. It's not going to be, and they even said, Wizard said, it's not going to be available on MTG Arena because Modern's not on there, which is good. I think the fact that this is on Magic Online and it's not available for MTG Arena because it that would be ridiculous if it was. It says it's good. It's good for the health of, of, of Magic Online because I will be drafting this a ton. There's also going to be a pre-release for this set, which is pretty unusual because I don't think any of the Master sets had pre-releases. Ultimate Masters, Iconic Masters, etc. I don't think those sets had their own pre-releases, but they're so excited about this set uh, that they are going to be having a pre-release for it on the weekend of June 8th and 9th. And this is, like it says, the second bullet point right up here is new cards and reprints of cards not in Modern. That's what the set's going to contain. So a card like Seething Song, already legal in Modern, not going to be in the set. A card like Goblin Electrolancer, not going to be in the set. When you're drafting this set, none of the cards you're drafting have ever been legal in Modern, and now they will be. And that's insane to me. The amount of design space... And, and like format space that this that this set opens up and this this philosophy now opens up is mind blowing to me. I don't even think we can grasp. I personally, I personally am unable to grasp what this means for modern going forward because it's now, it's now a format akin to to a set like to a format like Legacy or 
or vintage where like you can make a supplemental product like the commander decks and have the cards in there be legal for modern and this is something i've been begging for for the longest time because some of my favorite creatures are things like shardless agent and baleful strix i've gone on record and obviously they're saltai creatures but nonetheless like these are cards i've gone on record as saying like i would love to have these in modern maybe a blue black control deck in modern would be great if you could just add a, a, a one one for two that draws you a card and that can easily block things like Gurmag Angler or Tarmogoy for Death Shadow. You know, these are the cards that I really want to see in Modern, but unless you reprint them in Standard, it's never going to happen. And unless you have a reason to print, print a 1-1 one, one Baleful Strix artifact creature that's blue and black, uh, like a Shards of Alara set or something, like you're never going to be able to see that in Standard. So the barrier to have to, to have to go through Standard for a set as diverse and powerful as Modern it's just kind of silly, right? And at this point, it's like, I think we can really kind of avoid that. I think this is a great, great step in the right direction. And I, my only concern is the price point, right? So like for cards right now, like a card like Assassin's Trophy, it's going to be opened in mass because you have all of these standard players who are opening like boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes of Guilds of Ravnica and, and you know, Ravnica Allegiance and all, the, all these standard sets. So to go through standard in order to get into modern it is good for the, the, the supply and demand of a card, right? Because then you have like, let's say you open 10,000 million uh, Assassin's Trophies for standard. And then once they rotate out of standard, the demand for those cards is going down. Because, you know, now only the modern players want them and only the vintage players, the legacy players, what have you, want these cards. So it's nice that um, that this is being done. But I do worry if the only way to get these new cards, these brand new cards, same way like True Name Nemesis was like a $70 card at one point or like Toxic Deluge was a $50 card. And uh, these weren't even like Mythics. It does, I guess it doesn't matter because they were in the commander deck. So like, there's no real mythic or rare. Like they just, they, they come in the, the box and they, that's how you get them. Right. But like, because these cards, these rares that were only available in these supplemental products commanded such a high price that it's kind of scary to think that the only way to get these is through these packs. And this is the only set they've ever been printed in. Right. So like recruiter of the guild or something like that. I think that's what I, that's what I think of. But, um, you know, for modern, which is actually, I think, a much more popular, much more uh, broad format than, than Legacy. It's much more heavily played than, than, a, than a set like Legacy, I would say. That being said, I think that's one of the few downfalls that we're going to see here. Um, thankfully, there are a lot of reprints of cards that are not modern. And those should be more readily accessible if, you know, if you have a card like... Uh, What's the, what's the one that's like plus four, plus four, and you return a forest? Invigorate. Like if you got like Invigorate or, you know, things like things of that nature, like they're easy to get a hold of. You shouldn't be struggling to get a place of Invigorates if it's reprinted in a set like this, you know. But um, nevertheless, my biggest, my biggest concern for this is supply and demand. Because it's basically like a Vintage Masters, not a, yeah, like a Vintage, is it, Vintage Masters is Magic Online only. So it's like an Iconic Masters or an Ultimate Masters. However, instead of, uh, having a smaller audience of legacy and vintage players who want these cards, you just have a really large modern audience of cards of, of, of players who want these cards. And unlike uh, sets like Iconic Masters, where all of the cards are reprints, you have a lot of new cards in this set as well. So people are trying to get play sets of those, you know. And um, that's my big concern. My big concern for this is the price point. However, if you're a really serious modern player, you're not going to need to get all the cards in the set. You're just going to add whatever cards go in your deck. Like if you're playing Tron and there's, a, there's some great cards for Tron in the set, then you'll get those and be done with it, right? But uh, not everyone owns multiple multiple modern decks that they need to, to flesh out th due to this. And plus, I imagine it is going to be drafted pretty heavily because it seems like it, it should be a sweet set. If it's it, 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 They mentioned it was designed for drafting, which is great. Uh, I'm looking forward to that, especially if there's not... Especially if all these cards are new to modern. That seems sweet. But um, they did show off two cards from the set, two brand new cards from the set. So I'd like to show those to you guys. And uh, the first one was Cabal Therapist. It is one mana, like, it, like Cabal Therapy would be. It is a 1-1 one, one with Menace. The Menace is a nice touch. It doesn't really need it. Because nothing, none of its abilities have to do with attacking. But nonetheless, Menace is a nice touch because it makes it so this is actually a useful creature that can get some damage in. Maybe you want to trigger your Spectacle cards with this? I don't know. But um, Menace is nice. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, so after your upkeep, after your draw, your pre-combat main phase. So you can't play this guy in your first main phase and then activate him in your second main phase. It's your pre-combat main phase. It triggers one time. So you can't, you can't actually use it the turn you play it. You may sacrifice a creature. When you do, 
choose a non-land card name. So you can be like, oh, I'll sacrifice my voice of resurgence and I will name Collected Company. Uh, target player reveals all card, reveals their hand and discards all cards with that name. So basically Cabal Therapy. The nice thing is you can actually sacrifice Cabal Therapist to himself. So I can go play this guy in my second main phase. Next turn, in my pre-combat main phase, this guy will trigger. I will sacrifice him to, his, to himself and I will name whatever card. Right, so um, also this is nice for like aristocrats decks where you have a bunch of tokens, you want a bunch of blood artists, Zulaport cutthroat triggers, and this is a great way to get those because you also get to to look at their hand and figure out if they have anything that you want to take. This is a pretty sweet card. I mean, as a one one for one with an, with with two very relevant abilities in modern, one of them which is repeating, it's pretty sweet. Um, this card, I don't know what decks this is exactly going to fit into, but I definitely think there are some decks that this is going to fit into, and uh, it seems pretty good i don't know how good it is but it definitely seems it seems playable and i think that's a uh, that alone is a pretty high barrier of entry for for new modern cards the next card is a planeswalker surprisingly enough sarah the benevolent four mana i think four mana is the sweet spot anything higher is usually really hard to see play anything lower is you got to be real careful planeswalker sarah four loyalty creatures you control with flying Get plus one, plus one until end of turn. So if you go like turn two, Bitter Blossom, turn three, Lingering Souls, you can play Sarah and put her to six. And then your two Lingering Souls tokens and your your one attacking Bitter Blossom token that you got on turn three uh, can all attack. So you can attack for six six damage on that turn. Uh, plus you still have a six, a six loyalty Planeswalker and you still have all four tokens in play. Uh, creatures with flying get plus one, plus one. So only your flying creatures. But a lot of the creatures in the tokens deck already get that already get already have flying right like lingering souls spectral procession bitter blossom the only creatures that don't really are like the soren vampires if you're playing gideon the gideon tokens and like raise the alarm tokens or anything like that so that's plus two so she automatically goes to six which means she can ultimate the next turn after you play her and her ultimate i'm going to skip the second ability for now is you get an emblem with if you control a creature damage that would reduce your life total to less than one reduces it to one instead so that's literally just worship and personally, I've been trying to think about it. And outside of like sacrifice effects, which aren't that prevalent, if you're able to ultimate this and then also play like a hexproof creature, like a Geist of St. Traft or uh, heaven forbid, a troll ascetic, it's very hard to lose um, because you can't all of a sudden, you can all of a sudden Assassin's Trophy or Maelstrom Pulse or Cryptic Command bounce uh, the actual card worship anymore. You have to actually get rid of an emblem, which is impossible. So if you're able to, to land a hexproof creature and have this emblem in play, it's going to be very problematic. You have to be one of the few decks that can either Wrath of God and uh, not have your guy regenerate if it's, a, if it's a troll aesthetic, or if they only have one creature, you have to be able to like Liliana of the Veil to make them sacrifice it. So that's actually a pretty powerful ability, and it's pretty hard to deal with if you're able to sculpt a deck around it. But what I like right now is that the first ability and the last ability... Um, they kind of encourage two separate, completely separate deck types right there. Like you know, the first one, you want kind of a token strategy with flyers. The last one, you want kind of like a hex proof protect, uh, protect my, my solo creature type of thing. And the negative three is just, it's pretty solid. I mean, for four, you're, you're playing, you're paying four mana for this planeswalker. The negative three ability is create a four, four white angel creature token with flying and vigilance. So, you know, quite, quite flavorfully. And you're, you're quite literally creating a Sarah angel with the negative three ability. And the reason they, they mentioned that this card might be a little too, too good for standard. So it's like, it's not broken in modern by any means. It's not even super powerful in modern, but it's pretty good. And this card would be very, very good in standard. And you can tell because it's the equivalent of having a four, four flyer with vigilance. It's, it's the equivalent of having a four mana Sarah angel in standard that also comes with a one loyalty planeswalker. So think about that, right? Like you have, you have a 4-4 angel creature with flying and vigilance for 4 mana. That's a great rate already. But then it says when this comes into the battlefield, when this enters the battlefield, put a Sarah the Benevolent Planeswalker into play with one loyalty. Like when you look at it like that, it seems much, much stronger. And uh, I mean, the only problem is that if they kill the angel, uh, their their ability to kill the, the Sarah, Sarah the Benevolent with a creature that they're attacking with goes up exponentially. Um, but... I mean, that being said, that's that's true of most Planeswalkers, right? Most Planeswalkers that protect themselves, a lot of them do so with creatures. So if you're able to remove those creatures and then attack the Planeswalker directly, it's, that's just a problem. That's just... The, the, the point is that if you don't have that happen to you, you're usually pretty far ahead. 
But um, yeah, I'd love to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of Modern Horizons. The set looks super sweet. I mean, we've seen two cards from it so far, and they, they both excite me because they never existed before, and they're going directly into Modern. So that's actually amazing to me. As someone who who fancies himself um, a huge fan of Modern, who, 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 who considers Modern like my preferred format, um, I'm really excited about this. You know, I did Modern Monday up for, for both Channel Fireball and for TCG Player and for Newmont Gaming for the longest time. Uh, the Pro Tour I top aided was a Modern Pro Tour. So, I mean, these this is this is like the format that I've actually had the most fun and I actually love the diversity and the power level of Modern. So if we're able to get some of the tools that we really need, like something like Force of Will in Modern or, you know, something like uh, Swords to Plowshares in Modern, I think those would be pretty sweet. I don't know if they're too strong. I'm pretty sure the powers that be would have done testing to determine what is and isn't too powerful for modern but i love the idea of this that like in six months from now or next year in the 2020 uh modern horizon set if modern seems to really need a card like oh man we really need a card like i'm just gonna name a random card like crop rotation for some reason modern is really craving a crop rotation i like the potential that they can now just print it in a modern a modern sp a sp specific set and then you suddenly have this 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 gateway for cards into modern that that previously did not exist and i think that's huge it is i really felt like before this they were kind of shooting themselves in the foot by making sure that every card that made it into modern had to go through standard because they're two completely different formats the power levels are different there could be cards that are too powerful in standard that do nothing in modern and vice versa there are cards that don't do anything in standard and are extremely powerful in modern. It's it's very interesting because they fight on different axes. You know, like they're actually, you know, when you sit down, there's actually been situations where you sit down, one guy has a modern deck, one guy has a standard deck, and the standard deck can actually win um, because they're not playing the same game. They're geared, like a modern deck is geared towards modern cards and modern metagames, whereas the standard deck is just more, it's usually more direct, more linear. So anyway, this is just, these are just my thoughts. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Leave me, uh, leave me a like and a subscribe and uh, leave me a note in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. I would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, I'm looking forward to this. I hope you guys are too. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.